So, hi friends. Um, welcome to Football Bruises Night. We have um, football commentator and one of the guys from ESBF. It's his first time in the pod, Jamer De La Cruz, also known as Tito J. And I call the um, I call him the best friend of the pod because he's <laughs> always recording with me. I'm happy to talk about women's football. Ever so passionate and from the Ultras Filipinas and ESBF as well. Ket Garcia, gentlemen, welcome to the pod. I appreciate you taking the time to record with me tonight for a special year-end episode. So Hi, let's jump. <laughs> so let's <laughs> let's let's jump in. Let's keep it positive first. Ah, so it's been an eventful year for the Filipinas. What's your uh, favorite Filipinas moment? Uh, Jay, you want to start? Sure. Maybe it's your um... first time. Actually, ano nag notes ako. First time, first time in years na nag notes ako for a for a show or for a recording. To be honest, uh, favorite Filipinas moment, of course. Who could forget that trophy lift? No, that maiden trophy lift. Uh, in the AFF Women's Championship, I think all of us have waited for years and years and years for the Philippines to win a championship, let alone a tournament. Uh, and winning the AFF Women's Championship has been uh, the... will always be the crowning glory of Philippine football. Uh, because, you know, uh, gaya nga nang sabi natin before, uh, we've been looking at the wrong side of Philippine football for years. Uh, to be honest, uh, I'm getting a little bit, you know, controversial out here, pero... Um, It, it's the reality. We've been looking at the wrong side of football for, I don't know, five, six years. But the the ladies have just kept on fighting for, um, well, they're not fighting for relevance. They don't even care about it. They just actually wanted to represent the Philippines. And their crowning glory was the 2020, uh, 2022 AFF Women's Championship, which, you know, uh, we've witnessed. Kent and I witnessed that we were both crying in in the bleachers during that time. Hell, we didn't even care who we we're hugging that time. If we we're hugging somebody from a rival a rival club or a rival team, but yeah, that's my favorite uh, Filipinas moment of this year. Thank you, Jay. What about you, Kent? Well, aside from the AFF Women's Championship, <laughs> uh, well, big, uh, suddenly the memories came back <laughs> with Tito J. Um, good, good times, good times. Wow. Um, really, it's about you know the 2022 Women's Asian Cup. Um, I remember that tournament um very well. Not only because um, not only because we um that was a tournament. That led us into the Women's World Cup next year, but the manner that things suddenly came into place. Uh, it's like uh, a few months before the tournament, we had Coach Allen Stadchich appointed, and to be, uh, while we are hyped with the appointment, uh, we really don't know <laughs> what will happen. To be honest, it was like uh, the the training camp in the US went through, and then suddenly tournament nagad. Um, but uh, it turned out to be uh, like a good two weeks of football. Um, probably the most uh, high level football that we've ever seen from the Philippine women's national team. You know, who would have thought? <laughs> Until this day, uh, if you, I've said it many times before. If you're gonna tell me that. We're gonna qualify for the Women's World Cup next year. If you're, if you're gonna tell me about it, uh, about it sometime in twenty 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 one, I'd laugh. <laughs> I'd honestly laugh. I like seriously. But here we are, and it's an it's a moment that did not only push women's football, uh, the women's football inside the community. It pushed the consciousness of women's football throughout the country, and it's something that we're grateful for and it's something that uh we should continuously build on heading into the main tournament next year. Ang lalim naman ng sagot niyo. <laughs> Para prepared na prepared king dalawa. 
Tiganda ka talaga namin for tonight. <laughs> As like ako, I, I, I'm still torn between like qualifying, um, you know, after the PK shootout sa Asian Cup and winning the AFF. Kasi qualifying, yung after the PK shootout, umiyak talaga ako eh. And I was on a Zoom call with Pam, Luke, and then eventually there's like 10 other people who joined. Like Ceres, Tasha, Kit Kat, Frankie. Um, and anyway, on we were all laughing, tapos nagmumurahan kami, but we were in tears. Parang yung mga sira. Well, so, um, we had a video, uh, Tito J and David had a watch along there. And di oh, ko malilimutan oh. yun. <laughs> I mean, sabi, we're going to the World Cup! Sabi ko pa, naalala ko pa, naalala ko pa. <laughs> sabi ko pa kay Dave no, nung nasa watch along kami. Kasi, ano eh, pinatay niya yung stream niya sa end niya. Mm-hmm. Tapos, sabi ko, okay, Sabihin ko na lang ano yung nangyayari for the benefit of everyone. Tapos, talagang hindi na siya nanonood sa side niya. And then sabi ko, okay, tayo na. Si Bolden na, sabi ko. If we score this, we win. Huwagan na ako sa kanya. Tapos, inuulit-ulit na ni Dave. Tapos sabi ko, hold on to your seats, folks. Si, <laughs> si Dave, literal na hinawakan niya yung office chair niya. The moment na sumipa si Sarina Bolden. Tapos ako naman, nakatingin na lang ako sa TV, sabi ko, please, please, ipasok mo. Tapos magpasok nung goal, nung narinig ni Dave na, we're going to the World Cup. Wala na. Tears, profanity, and all that kind of stuff went out the window. Tapos talagang, uh, after noon, alam ko, Kent, nag-post, uh, nag-post match live reacts kami noon. Inabot na kami ng, natapos yung game around 1 or 2 a.m yata or something around that time tapos yung live reactions natapos kami around 4 a.m. 5 a.m. <laughs> tapos sino sino na yung... kayo until that time oo naka live so, kami naka zoom kami until like 6 a.m. <laughs> yung may araw na sa so, zoom so kami naman naka live ka, naka live kami until 5 a.m. na kung sino sino na yung pumasok sa uh, sa meeting room uh, there was a time that we were able to bring in Coach Ernie Nieras to talk about the humble beginnings of the of the women's national team, kung paano nag-start yung recruitment process overseas. And then, uh, yun nga, yung sinasabi niya na, ako nagpangalan dyan eh. <laughs> ganun, ganun pa siya sabi noon. Hindi uh, ko nalang babanggitin, pero siya nga, nag, siya nga raw nagpangalan noon. <laughs> Tapos, um... I think the moment na talagang natuwa kami during that live reaction was yung ano, uh, we, we were able to bring in Sedef straight from 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 India that time nung kakatapos lang nung, uh, nung semifinals tapos kakatapos lang din ng press con and all that stuff. Wala, as in hindi makapagsalita rin si boss uh, CPT that time na parang wala, ito na eh. Ito na, ito na talaga. Tapos dumbfounded kami lahat Eh, nda sabi ko, enda natin tong live. Gigising na yung magina ko. <laughs> Ako matutulog pa lang. <laughs> Nag- Nag-join din si CPT si sa amin. Well, I think ano, after dinner na yon. And then um we kind of held his phone. Tapos mm-hmm. inter- introduced us to Coach Allen. And then the first wow. thing, and then the first thing Coach Allen said was happy. And then we lost it. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then ano yun, so parang Ang ano lang, ang parang, it's, it's, it was still very surreal. Tapos, kahit 5 a.m. na, parang walang gusto mag-end nung Zoom call. True. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then, in the AFF naman, you know, I, I couldn't cry because I couldn't afford to lose focus because I was doing um social media for the AFF. But just, you know, being being in the stands with people, um practically, some of them strangers, no? So, we were high-fiving, you couldn't makakilala, alam mo Mm. Tapos the, the journals in the media tribune, they were all shouting, hugging. Tapos I get to hug, you know, um some friends also. We were jumping around. I mean, it's a great feeling to to celebrate it with other fans who, you know, understand what joy, the emotions you felt at that very moment. You know, so it's just incredible because <laughs> I don't know when it's going to happen again. And if it will ever happen again, para save na siya instantly sa some memory memory bank in it's hard to explain to someone who's not into into football and then i think mas ang pinaka nag-enjoy dito sa atin lahat si ano si Ken oh so <laughs> nung <laughs> naalala ko nung ano na parang tunnel na 
parang nararamdaman na natin na, uy, may confirmation na ito na, andito na, uh-huh. nararamdaman na, na, na ni Kent. Um, ano bang ginagawa ni Kent nun? Wala, nagmumura na lang siya sa stands nun eh. Minumura, <laughs> minumura na lang niya kung sino yung makita niya. Minumura na lang niya. Ito you know, na. So, ganun na yun. <laughs> yun na lang yung nakikita ko kay Kent. Tapos sabi ko, teka lang, hindi pa tayo tapos. Lumalaban pa yung Thailand kasi nakikita ko maatake pa yung Thailand eh. Kumbaga parang ako ayoko pa kumpiyansa kasi every time I call something na, oh ito na. Kaya na natin to, makuha na natin to. Every time I say that, kabalik tara nyo nangyayari. Nangyayari na twice sa akin with with the uh, with my uh, local club Kaya. So since then, hindi na ako nag-claim ng kung ano man. <laughs> kasi alam ko na nangyayari siya in reverse sa akin. So sabi ko, wait lang, hindi pa tapos kasi umatake pa yung Thailand. Nagkakaroon pa sila ng chances. Kasi aminado si Kent noon, hindi na niya pinapansin. Kasi ayaw na niyang... Ayaw na niyang mawala yung moral sa kanya. Ayaw na niyang mawala yung yung momentum na hindi ito na kay ito na tayo, nandoon na tayo. Pero sabi ko hindi hindi pa tapos. Kalma ka lang. Sabi ko. Sabi ko kay Ken, suot mo muna yung shirt mo mamaya na. Tinakabantayan niya 'yung shirt na noon. Pero nung third goal, sabi ko, okay sige. All hell broke loose. Ken took off his shirt. Uh, Kerson and I were crying. We were hugging each other. Uh, the entire jam line ng, ng Ultras that time, we were just hugging each other. Tapos, wala. Talagang umiiyak na kami. And then, suddenly, I saw a wild uh, Kent Garcia uh, trying to climb up the, the fence. Sabi ko, oh, sige, kaya mo na yan. Hindi na ito Hindi ko na siya pinigilan. And then, na- na-realize niya na I'm too old for this crap. So, nagyakap <laughs> pa na lang kami. <laughs> Ibilin ba na sa iba? <laughs> okay. So, uh, medyo na warm up na. <laughs> so, follow Following the lead, um, kasi ESPN US did this and then the Far Post pod also. I'm not sure if you uh, heard about the Far Post pod. So, mm. they're under ESPN Australia and New Zealand. So, I figured let's do our own version of their big board. No? So, so basically, um, we'll have a look at where things are currently um, for the Filipinas. So, we'll have four categories, of course, of goalkeepers, the defenders, midfielders, and forwards. Within each category... We'll have a tier. So one would be um, yung who you think is locked in for the squad. Okay. If the you know, we're talking about if the World Cup uh is to be held hypothetically next week and we have to announce a lineup today. Mm-hmm. So who mm-hmm. are your locked in um players? And then um the second tier would be those who are in the conversation or for whatever reason they're they're not uh they're not a lock it might be because of injury or they're not in form or it's a depth issue or if they're a second choice for a specific position so a good example would be Chandler McDaniel who would not be a lock at this point because she's still working her way from an ACL injury so Um, we can have another one by June. I'm sure it will be an entirely different conversation. But for now, this hypothetically, we have to release the the lineup today because the World Cup na next week. So, mm. ayon. <laughs> um, ako magbibilang. Ayon ko na mag 23 kasi I tried doing this on my own. Hindi ko complete yung 23. Or... Bigat, no? <laughs> Bigat, eh. <laughs> Pero so, naman ko din, eh. Nung, nung tinitignan ko, kasi ako, uh, di ba sabi mo, if we were to give our 23 player squad uh, uh, today, kasi next week na yung World Cup, what if mm. what I've done is to look at the last three camps of the yeah, Philippines, no? I did the same thing, oh. Di ba? Tapos sabi ko, shit, sino dito, eh? Lahat, <laughs> lahat. Alam mo yung, alam mo yung sinulat ko yung pangalan nila, tapos nirarang ko, wait lang, Walang tapon to. Walang tapon oh. to. Wala rin tapon to eh. Hirap, di ba? So, so let, let's not count na if we if we complete or sopratize sa 23. So, more hmm. on like conversational pieces na lang per um category. So, let's begin with um goalkeepers because that's the easiest part of the squad to kind of uh, deliberate. You want to start with this one, Jay? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean... Uh, Liv's always going to be locked in. Uh, she's been consistent all throughout the the camp. 
uh, actually she found her form since the women's championship and uh, she didn't stop from there. Tapos if you can actually notice, compare her size from the Asian Cup to her size now, it's it's somewhat ano na, uh, yung yung she's getting fitter and fitter by the day uh, to the point that you could see that oh by the time World Cup is around she's gonna fly. Yeah. <laughs> that was, um, and then yung somehow locked in for me or in the conversation is uh, Kiara Fontanilla. Uh, why not Ina Palacios? I mean, Ina's been an integral part of Philippine women's football for God knows how long. And uh, I mean, her being part of the squad still is going to be an honor for, for Ina Palacios considering all of the contributions she's made uh, to the game. But at the same time, we have to look beyond the the women's world cup because uh women's world cup is not a means to our end eh. uh especially that we're having conversations about what's happening with their counterparts we don't want to end up somewhere around that part na we don't know what's what what the future holds for us so i think ina has done you know a decent amount of honor to bring back to the to the country but you know it, it it's never gonna hurt her to to step aside and give an opportunity to a younger um to a younger player like Chiara Fontanilla interesting hmm. oh, sige. I'll, I'll say my piece later Kent you want to add to what uh, Jamer said or who are your locked in players or who are your two or three keepers for the World Cup well, or hypothetical I... World Cup <laughs> <laughs> I uh my answer would be identical like uh what Tito J said. Um Olivia is certainly a luck. Um Kiara Fontanilla um is also somewhat locked in as a solid backup and also held her own in some matches that she featured. The third would be a really a um it depends eh, because you have um you have Ina Palacios who's a veteran and you have Kaya Jota, who's uh one who's upcoming. So it depends on the coaching staff, really. Uh, what do you prefer? Do you want to give someone? Uh, do do you want to give in a? Uh, it's something that, uh, for someone who's been a regular fixture in the national team for the last few years, like Ina, to be able to bring her to the uh, women's World Cup is a very uh, realization of her journey. You, I think she has already has she already has more than fifty caps for the women's national team. At at our women's national team, the modern history of our women's national team rarely happens. Um, mm-hmm. while Kaya is relatively taller, I think uh she's taller than Liv. I I think she's the tallest keeper that we have in our pool right now. Sorry, you're and talking only... about Kaya or Kiara? Ah, uh, Kaya. Kaya, okay. Kaya Jota. Kaya oh, yeah. okay. Uh, he, he he's the she's the tallest keeper there. So um it depends on the coaching staff whether they want to um give valuable experience to a young goalkeeper or um you no know, um go for a reliable veteran who has served her country. It's a tough to- <laughs> it's uh not as dito easy. Hirap no? na ako. Oh, nothing's easy in this kind of level because you know, all the factors come into play. Not only what happens now, but what happens in the past. But you know, um, one thing's for sure: those two spots in the goalkeeper category, it belongs to Liv McDaniel and Kiara Fontanilla as of now. Okay, so that's those are your two locked-in players. So I think it's been um pretty well established uh this year that um. Olivia is our first choice goalkeeper. So that's no surprise. She's the consistent starter, especially when we're facing um tougher oppo- tougher opponents. So um you need to be playing well, playing a lot in order to justify your your position. Um so this is where we differ. Because I put Ina Palacios on lock for second choice, just because of how incredibly experienced she is. She has played more international um matches than any of our any of the players in the squad. Um, though she may not be playing as many minutes. Uh, 
to me, if we're talking about a 23-player squad, we'll probably have three goal goalkeepers. So I'm confident that, that the third one would be Kiara Fontanilla. Um, but um, I would love for Ina to be included in that squad um, for, for a lot of sentimental reasons, to be honest. Um, I think she, she deserves a spot in that. Um, in our hypothetical World Cup next week. <laughs> so let's go to um, defenders. You want to have a crack at it, Kent, since you're the defender lover here. Um. Yes. Um. Actually, it's a welcome development for the Filipinas that we had key additions to our defensive rotation. Well, it's it's uh it's always been uh a few months ago after the women's Asian Cup, we were concerned about the depth. Eh? The depth of the we had a, we have a solid like back line, but when a player goes injured, who are we gonna go to? But now, um, ten months uh ten months after that, I think we're in we're in very good shape when it comes to uh the defense. Um, Lux to go um to the women's World Cup if uh if it starts next week. First of all, Jessica Coward, yes. Um and Maya Alcantara, well for for uh for obvious reasons they are uh Maya is enjoying a very good season has enjoyed a very good season with Georgetown, I mean in NCAA Division One women's soccer, I, I mean you can you cannot um you cannot discount that you cannot throw that out of the window, maybe she hasn't had that much um baptism of fire when it comes to playing for the national team but in when you base it in current form she's on she's on form and her height as well um 510 uh will be useful for like more more uh, physical um forwards in our group so yeah and yeah just coward very reliable can also score as well. So, um, and if like what we what what we saw in the Papi, Papua New Guinea friendies, he can be she can be a she can be a CDM. So that's that adds to her versatility. So yeah, and then maybe um, Eva Madarang should be uh, locked in as well. Um, I've never um Eva Madarang. I've never remembered a national team match in which she played that she looks sluggish. She always gives 110% whoever the opposition is. So I'll give her that. Um well, um the rest though, um that's the good thing with our defensive rotation. Um outside of those three I can't really see any uh, um uh, anyone who's really locked yet. Um, Sophie Harrison has been performing well, but some injury issues. So I think she might need to, you know, ensure that he'll be able, she'll be able to play um, consistently again. But when she's on form and healthy, she's good. So yeah. Um, then Alicia Barker, um, she's very good. Uh, I. In that pop, in those Papua New Guinea's friendly friendies, I think uh, she assisted a goal or a couple. Very good crossing. Um, gives competition to Eva. Um, will have that handy, but I think she needs more time to integrate with the squad. Um, and um, Dom Randall, she needs to step up as well. I mean. If we're being objective in a one-on-one -on -one defending ability, he's she's probably the best in that rotation. But outside of that, she needs to improve, especially distributing the ball from the back. Or, you know, um those tendencies when we are in possession. I think that's the edge that Coward Coward Jessica Coward holds over her. That's why Coward got the consistent start in the center back position once she was available so dom needs to be somewhat uh improving in that aspect if she wants to secure her spot but uh i think it's like 60 40 60 being locked <laughs> i mean 
Then um, Malaya as well, um, also objective observation. I think uh, she needs to improve her defending. Very good moving forward, but the defending might need to be uh, might need to be you know improved improved as well. But well, she's nineteen, so a lot of things to improve on. Um, then maybe in the almost uh, might be left out. Then we have Tara. So, but uh, I think she she should get more looks, more minutes, um, so that she know uh, ne, so that she will uh, the coaching staff will have an observation on how she might do as well. Um, Chantel is still young as well. Um, I think she might not make it for me, but in the next cycle we might see her more. Yeah, and. Um, can I include someone who's not eligible yet, but possibly? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I actually want to talk about it, but you, you can start, uh, Kat. Go, go for it. Uh, well, I, oh, pala, um, well, I forgot. Sorry, I forgot. Because, um, Hali Long, pala, um, she's also a luck for me. Par, ano siya, eh? Parang katulad ni Ina. She will provide that experience. Sorry, Captain. Sorry, nalimutan kita, Captain. <laughs> Pero, <laughs> I mean, uh, 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 but, ano, Hali will, ano, Hali should be uh, like a lock over there. Um, Whether she's starting or not, the leadership that he she provides alongside Ina, it will be a big help. You, ano ba? Uh, maliban, kung hindi ka naglalaro, you're the, you're the glue player. You, you hold the thing together. Yan. More than the more than just the playing ability, it's Hali Long's leadership qualities. Angela Bird, um, not eligible yet. I mean, not playing yet. I I don't honestly I don't know what's ha what happen what is currently happening with her, um, eligibility status. But if in case he's she's available tomorrow, she should be there. She should be there. Uh, I'm 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 not um I'm not gonna min I'm not gonna deny it. Uh, a defender of her caliber, if she's available for selection next week, I'd include her right away. Even if you say that, uh, she hasn't got any competitive friendies yet, I'll include her there. Gotcha. Tito J. Pinahirapan ako ni Ken. Diyos ko. <laughs> Dami. I'm just kidding. Ang dami nga eh. Uh, as Kent was actually going through the players, I have my own list. Tapos sabi ko, wala pa nung papasok to. Pero ano, locked in uh, almost similar with Kent, uh, with with Hailey Long. Uh, of course, sabi nga ni Kent, if she's not starting, she's gonna be the voice from the bench, kind of like uh, how Cristiano Ronaldo was during the last World Cup. Um, so, yun. Then, uh, you have Kaya Hawkinson. Uh, Bonta. Actually, Bonta, over the last few friendlies, what I liked about her is her composure from the back. Despite the pressure coming from, from the opponents, she's the calming presence out there in center back or uh, at our back line na uh, Pag nasa kanya yung bola, huwag kang mag-alala. Kaya niya pa laruin niya bago niya ipasa yung bola palabas. And and she's actually proving us right uh, with her selection with the team. So that's someone that you want to see uh, as part of your backline heading into the World Cup. Especially we have quality players to play against with. Um, then you have Maya Alcantara. Uh, Jessica Coward, of course. Uh, her anticipation of you know, of attacks from the opponents is something that I admire the most. Uh, it's something that I'm looking for a, a proper, uh, you know, proper defender. Because uh, I think due to the modern football, gone were the days that defenders just throw themselves at the opponents and just, you know, slide tackle, uh, get the ball and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, Coward gives us the uh, a glimpse of the past type of defender plus a mix of a, of a modern football defender na she knows when to commit she knows when to uh, wait for the opponent to uh, to come by so that's someone that I'm looking for as well uh, Malaya Cesar 
uh, somehow a locked in for me. Sophia Harrison, uh, she's been an option at the full back position, uh, somewhat a wing back position as well. So something that we need heading into the World Cup because if we would have plenty of options on the attack, Sophia Harrison is going to be one of them. Uh, Sama si Jessica Coward because knowing how Sophia Harrison ran from from the back all the way up front in the game nila against Papua New Guinea, it's something that gusto kong makita on a regular basis kasi uh, we need to have plenty of attacking options uh, we need to show our fangs into this World Cup so that's somewhat a locked in for me ilan na ba yun? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 I think 7 defenders in the squad not bad number actually kasi sabi nga ni Kent before if we're gonna field the team we would only field uh, 4 starters for our defense and probably two or one one substitute. So we're spoiled we're spoiled for options right now. Meron pa ako mga ibang hindi na banggit pero I think this actually, you know, uh makes up the uh the 23 squad or the squad that's going to be playing the World Cup next week for me. Thanks Jay. So this is interesting for me because um first off, I'm not sure if Dom Randall is injured, but um I'm locking in Dom Assuming, you know, she's not injured. Um, just looking at someone who brings um, versa- versatility. Uh, we've seen how hard she works, how much she runs, which is, uh, for me, a uh, valuable quality she in a, in a stage ecosystem, if you will. Especially, uh, you need that from someone coming off the bench, you know. Um, she's a valuable player to me when we qualified for the World Cup. In fact, she was my player of the tournament for the Filipinas in the Asian Cup, playing the most minutes. So those are the reasons why I have her locked in. Haley, no question about that. Solid, incredible leader. We we all know that. Locked in for sure. I'm not including Coward here because I've listed her as a midfielder. Um, I would I would love to see her transition over to that midfield position. So Sophia Harris said, amazing on the left. Um, you've all mentioned it. Um, ever reliable in that position. So I'm locking her in. It's the same reason for Ava. Um, Malia Cesar. So these are like the um some of the conversation um uh pieces for me. So Malia Cesar, uh, I was impressed by her in the Chile match. I feel like I saw a different person, um, stronger, faster, me, me, Angas. But because of the death of the backline now with the new additions, I haven't really figured out the rest. That's why I'm putting her in the second year and in the same vein, Angie Beard. So we we she's she's a threat at left back, but she can also go forward and and score score great goals. She's done that many times with um Melbourne Melbourne victory when she was playing in 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 the dub. So. The question now really is, will she play for us? But that's that's the vibe. We don't know her pass, passport situation. But um, like I tweeted a few weeks ago, she was spotted in Manila. She even posted about it. So does that mean she has the passport? We, <laughs> we don't know. Um, but if we are to believe the rumor, hopefully um, she can make a debut in the Pinatar Cup. And can I just say, when that's confirmed, I can truly say that we've built um, what Pampa calls our intramuros. I feel like once we have her, we've got our backline sorted. Because with her, and then we have a dynamic option on the right with Alicia Barker. If we all do 4 for 2 if possible, it will be an interesting um, thing to see if we can have Haley and Maya Alcantara partnership at the back. Um, I'm not sure if Maya will be available for the Pinatarka, but if she would be and she's part of the camp, I would love to see how that works. Um, I'm not completely sold on Bonta yet. I would love to see more of her because I love her. Like you've pointed out, Jay, very calm with the ball, very collected. So, parang ano, ang, alam mo yung tahimik lang siya, pero alam mo, so hindi mo siya feel yung impact niya. And th- that's the only reason why, like, um, I, I want to see more of her because I feel like I don't feel like she's not feeling but you can see nga, her calmness um, with the ball and then Chantel I think I she has proven her worth as a defender um, my concern would be 
how it might be very challenging versus taller defenders from European teams. But we all know that she makes up um she makes it up with the composure, technique and and speed. But like what Kent said, I I I honestly don't think she'll she'll make the final um our our hypothetical World Cup roster. Um, Dito pa lang, yeah. naiiyak ka na. <laughs> Ang hirap, di ba? See, that's, that's the reason. I'm not sure why why we need to go through this and why I decided that we we go through something like this. But kasi I listened to the the ESPN pod that they did a breakdown of the USWNT and they did that with with um the Far Post pod. So, alam mo yun, very, um, uh, tawag dito, ano siya, parang eye-opener na like for me, what if we do that with the Filipinas, no? Parang, oh my God. Ngayon pa lang, parang na ewan. <laughs> ano kasi, it gives, it gives you uh, an idea right away na, yeah. is the training camp really working? Or yes. is it something that we're just doing for mere presentation purposes, di ba? Yeah, parang true. at least, uh, doing these kind of lists, no, uh, we were able to come up with people who we believe are gonna make it to the squad. Because we were able to see them excel in those training yeah. camps or in those friendly matches that we've been watching. Because if if we're not gonna be able to come up with the players na na nasa list or say for example we're just gonna stick with the squad that we played in the AFF uh, championships, then what we can say with the uh, with the women's national team management is just stop whatever you're doing just set up camp here in manila bring in all the players don't do any friendlies anymore because we're already satisfied with what we're seeing but that's that's what actually keeps us going that's what keeps us fans analysts and uh, journalists going to see how far we can actually push this team and uh, yun yeah good thing that we actually have this kind of you know um depressing and uh, mind-picking list that we have because it, it really gives us a view on how things are going to pan out uh, come the, the Women's World Cup. I, I just I just want to add, no, especially that we've touched on um, Dominic Randall because I, I I really have a um, concern, not concern um, about transparency because, you know, fans and supporters, you know, we will continue to speculate, diba? In interviews, Coach Taj would um, say during camps, now, oh, we have, we're having um, niggles or some players are injured. But we want to know who these players are. In other FAs, in other teams, when one of their players uh, is injured, there's a statement with severity, although sometimes vague then. But you know who the injured player is. I feel like for us, it's always a guessing game which is, um, to be honest, kind of uh, frustrating. Like you would include someone like, let's say, Jackie Savicki in, in, in the call-up and then she will not play because she was injured. And then people expect, you know, expect her to be in the lineup because of how good she is. But, um, alam mo yun, hindi, hindi natin alam yung like real picture of who is injured or, you know, or specifically what the injuries are. Like, ano lang, like ako kasi um, following international women's football parang ano na yan parang even required but parang it's a, it's a it's a practice that most FAs do so siguro my expectation lang would be um you know uh dapat nakalabas din siya kasi i would hate for fans to um uh, fans and support, supporters to speculate na uh, oh hindi siguro si start yan kasi ano mahina na siya or may mas magaling ganyan ganyan not knowing that the player is injured you know what i mean so um, ayun lang. I I just wanted to <laughs> touch touch base on that because I was um I was I was trying to figure out because with the rules of our hypothetical um uh, release for the lineup, parang if injured, hindi natin siya ila lock in. And I and I really thought about um Dom Randall's situation when I was um working on the on the defenders list. So ayun lang. I just wanted to say that we can proceed with the midfielders. Did the J one start? <laughs> <laughs> uh well random ko yung frustration dun ano. Wala na akong sasabihin kasi alam na nagent yan. <laughs> uh midfielders of course locked in right away T. Um I mean our our team captain Tianis has been firing on all cylinders. Uh since I don't know since the Asian Cup 
So uh, of course that's uh, that's an automatic. Sarah Gisvik is also uh, another automatic locked in for me because you know we need that kind of player a la Sergio Busquets slash Iniesta on our midfield and uh, Sarah Gisvik fits the bill in uh, in the women's context. Uh, she knows where to pass the ball. She knows where to open up. That's someone that we need, especially in, a, ex- in this coming World Cup. Expect that players are going to come at you. Players are going to come at you to get the ball. So you need somebody who knows how to you know, spread the ball out wide and uh, pass it around. Um, I've listed Eva Madarang as one of the midfielders as well. Uh, only because number one, she's our ambassadress. No, just kidding. <laughs> but uh, I know the the mere fact that she's been with the national team for God knows how long as well. She deserves that. She deserves that. Uh, just like all the other players deserve it. Eva, on paper, uh, and by merit, really deserves that. So, uh, who else? Uh. I I really want to lock in Savitsky, but you know, it's it's still something that is gonna be talked about for months to come. Uh, Serrano, Mario Serrano, uh, she had a decent outing in the Papua New Guinea friendlies, so I'm I'm hoping. Well, I listed her as a midfielder, so I'm hoping uh, we'll have her on the squad and the uh, siguro last one that I want to put in in midfield it may be a shock or a surprise to the both of you but I want to see Bella Flanagan operating midfield this time around because last time in the Papua New Guinea game she's been placed as a forward kundi so uh, having her as a forward is is good it's it's nice to see her up front pero I think she could operate more from the midfield if you pair her with somebody like Egis Vig in midfield, or if you just have her, someone who's just roaming around that right mid to an advancing position, maybe, just maybe she could excel in that in, in that position. So, yeah. Interesting. I think Kent would have something to say about that. Oh, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, about uh, some mid- midfield natin, it's something na, uh, it's something that is quite sorted already for a for quite some time. I mean the the core players there are always there. So uh it's just like uh coach Allen and the coaching staff are trying possible combinations in the midfield and to sort out or to maybe see how it would work, how would it change our dynamic defensively and offensively. Um Locks in the roster uh, for the midfield. Um, first of all, Captain Tanay Anes uh, brings the experience. Um, I don't know if this might be probably her final international tournament. I hope not yet, but in for her career, um, she's not getting any uh, any younger. Um, I think um, she deserves to be there. And, well, she's, she's a lock. For... Uh, Second, Sarah Egesbik, our main creative force in the midfield. She's a lock. Um, contrary to Tito J, I'll put Jacqueline Savitsky as a lock uh, because I think um, she provides that um, ball retention, ball winning midfielder role that will complement Sarah very well. Um, I just think... Um, she had an injury recently, I think. Um, she, uh, her health should be more. Uh, the injury report now. Hopefully, it gets more stable. No more injuries. Hopefully, by next year. But uh, that Savitsky, uh, Egesvik combo has been working for us. Midfield pivot, and you know, if it if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So yeah. Uh. The, the thing about those two midfielders kasi they know their roles. Uh, Jackie wins the ball, provides it to Sarah, then pro- and Jackie provides cover to in between Sarah and the back line. 
that's that's her role while Sarah is free to join the attack and provide those incisive passes so yeah and I'd put Carly in as a midfielder wide midfielder um I think she can be a good impact sub for Eva if ever Eva uh plays um as a mid wide mid um Carly can be there and provide some impactful minutes off the bench. Um, in the second tier, um, we have Meryl Serrano. Uh, Meryl had good uh, good showing recently in the friendlies. However, we uh, the reason I put her there because she's still coming off an injury and we need to see more of her. We need to see more of her. And uh, hopefully, she'll get more playing time in the Pinatar Cup. So, but the quality is there. The quality is there. We just need to see her integrate more with the squad, uh, in the competitive side. Then, um, we have uh Kai Hawkinson. I think uh she's been a she's been decent, but I um I think uh I can't see her breaking the starting lineup unless we really get depleted there. So. Um then next um I know sh- she has not been invited recently to the camps but uh due to injury um correct correct me if I'm wrong Venice uh, on the detail but uh, Riley Bugay um the reason why I still want her to be considered is because um I'll never forget that women's Asian Cup campaign where she, she really provided solid coverage to our back line. I mean, she's not as energetic or like the, she does not have the motor that Jacqueline Zabitsky has. But when you, if you need someone who will really cover for our defense, Riley is that player. And you cannot discount that. I mean, um, I I think uh I wish she could be given one more one more movie uh, one more chance <laughs> uh before we she, uh we decide on the final lineup for the World Cup. But if the World Cup hypothetically starts next week, uh, she'll she'll be a um match day option for me. Then um Jessica McLeod um. Je- uh, we rarely have that midfielder like Chandler, though Chandler like plays like a false nine. But um, Je- Jessica McLeod can do the same role as well, uh, but can do it um, from the midfield, like a uh, operator that uh, connects the midfield and the offense and the forward line. Um, with that, uh, we know that uh, she's not being called up recently to the training camps, but she's also putting the work on herself. Um, so we'll, we'll see. But uh, then maybe, um, maybe not joining this lineup. Um, we have um, Anika. Anika. Um, but we'll see what uh, she, she signed with the club recently. In Australia, if I'm not mistaken, or yeah, uh, let's see her development there. Um, the thing about our midfield, kasi parang we have our core players and the uh, substitutes are also reliable as well. Walang wala masyadong, kung sa term sa Filipino, wala masyadong tapon. Walang tapon. Lahat, oh. they know their roles, they know when to step up. It's just that maybe next year. Hopefully, the others who are in the second tier that I've mentioned, they'll be given a chance to challenge and to prove themselves that they deserve a spot. Kasi dun sa midfield natin, I think, ano na siya, nag-iiba-iba lang ng position, but it's still practically the same midfield pool that we have. I gotcha. Ken, I, I just want to tickle your brain a little bit because I know you're a big Bella Flanagan fan. What can you say about Jace? Jay's uh opinion that um Bella could be could be playing a midfielder role instead of forward. Mm, it can be an option, but 
um we we try to stick with the natural uh, playing position kasi um we don't want uh players for me uh, heading into a big tournament um we don't want players to play like a contingency role as possible you want to put them in their strong points in their natural playing position so that you can get the most out of them but well um what i see with bella is yung pace din kasi very pacey uh knows how to dribble past defenders i think that's what T- tito j saw well we saw a lot of it in the aff women's championship uh she was dribbling through defenders with ease doing some trickery <laughs> at the side so that would be useful in in the flanks where she she might be deployed but i think she uh, bella flanagan is suited more as a as a forward rather than a midfielder especially in a forwards outside of our veterans we don't really have any any options yet really so, solid options yet well bella is already a veteran on her own on that forward line so i don't really see any any reason that we we transfer her to the to the midfield rotation okay thanks ken um Wow. Okay. So, to me, <laughs> medyo tricky. Hindi man tricky kasi uh, we know Savicki is injured. So, by our rules, she can't be locked in for next week's World Cup. But truth be told, if she's fit right now, she's definitely a lock for me. Just for just for her mere um, leadership in the midfield, I think she's, she was vital. She's outstanding in her role. And like the like what Kent already uh, talked about, her partnership with Sarah Egesvig, who's another lock for me, is is just impressive. So to me, they're both the the lifeline in our midfield. And right now, there hasn't been another midfield midfielder for me who have shown a promise to step up yet like they both did. Um, Captain T, of course, is a lock for me. I love her swag, her confidence. Um, She's not the fastest, but her... positioning and movement is key. Um Carly's also a lock for me just the way she's been playing and starting recently. Um I'm impressed when she makes the run and she has shown over the last uh two or three camps that she could also be a a, a finisher. Um Kaya Hawkinson I really want to see more of her. Um same with Ken. Um I don't see her starting but you know um I really just want to see more of her or of her play because she 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 did very well in her collegiate season so um hopefully that translates when she she plays with with the team um there's a big talk about Meryl Serrano but honestly so far her form's chunky for me but now I know that you mentioned that she's she's injured um so that could be the reason why um but you can see that you know And then she, if if given more minutes to grow or when she's uh well. Um hmm, who else? Uh hmm. right now I would I would I would I would put Annika uh Tyron Cambrod in the conversation here. They would need more minutes. Um unfortunately they'd have to uh be really fighting for a spot um, um for the world cup um but yeah they're, they're on my convo list uh, for sentimental reasons because they're hard workers they're a spying group of um future players and and they've proven their worth you need to have um players that can come off the bench and i don't know provide a bit of x x factor or you know just something special uh you have to have places For those that you can, you know, call upon in and if there are injuries, too. it's like I'm saying they can be there as a backup. Yes, I think that's what I'm saying. Um, I I, I would really um love for them to 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 have a spot in in the World Cup, but they're they're not locked in uh, at this point. Um, forwards. Uh, okay. Oh, ako naman mag start. So so forwards. Um, Katrina Gilu for sure. Um, she she's the kind of player who can uh read uh, the play a little bit faster than most players, and I think that's the reason why she ends up being in positions where she, sometimes she can stop or score a goal. Um, she make she can make decisions on the fly. I don't know, like for me, her 
her game awareness is just different. Um, QQ, I would love to see more of QQ up top. Like in the um, PNG games, uh, compared to how she played in the AFF, I think she's more of a better attacking option. Um, and of course, Serena, she definitely warrants a lock-in after that performance in the AFF. Um, Bella Flanagan, really, I think um, you've explained it very well, uh, how, how good she is um, passing through defenders. But I think also we need her energy and fearlessness. Because that's what I really like about, about Bella. She's just fearless. Um, ayun. You want to add to it, uh, Jay? Um, ako, the the forwards that I've actually listed, Kat Giyu, of course. Grabe. Napakabalis niyang bumasa ng game to the, to the point to the point na mangyayari pa lang yung mistake ng kalaban. Alam niya na na mangyayari yun. Nandun na siya sa position na yun na top in na lang yung magiging goals niya. So that's an automatic lock in. QQ for more pew 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 in the World Cup, di ba? <laughs> kating kating ko kating kating ko gamitin yun nung ano nung nung PNG game kaso uh, for for unforeseen circumstances medyo held back <laughs> si Tito J niya nung PNG game pero yeah Kaya, um, pew 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 for the pew pew di ba <laughs> <laughs> ang sarap gamitin nun pero yeah I mean uh, she's an automatic right away kasi uh that's someone or that's some uh something that we're expecting of uh, of her to add more tally to her goals then uh, of course arena bolden uh, again her exploits in the AFF women's championships warrant uh more playing time especially in the upcoming FIFA women's world cup so in yeah um those are the three locked ins for me yung, yung sinabi yung dalawa about Bella Flanagan I I, I really want to see her more as well in her natural position it's just an option to see if if we really need that kind of option in midfield because I've seen her uh excel in that kind of department as well so yeah so far um there are three locks for me in the forward department first of all uh well, make it four. <laughs> uh, first of all, Sarina Bolden. No introduction. Sarina Bolden is Sarina Bolden, the the most lethal forward that we have on that team. And uh, I just don't want to comment because I <laughs> I saw her score so many times, um, and the fans know it. Her quality, yeah. Uh, Katrina Giyu as well. Um, probably. Uh, if if uh if Sar- if Sarina is the most aggressive type of forward poacher, uh Katrin has a nice um combination of experience, technical skill, and football IQ. You know, um that's something that you really get from playing in a very high level league for women's football in Sweden. So um I really I really I really like uh what I really like about Katrina Giyu's uh game is she doesn't waste any movements or any time. Um everything that she does on that forward line on the flanks has a purpose. Either she assists, she she puts in a cross or she goes for an attempt on her own. You know that um it has uh, it will have a good outcome. And that's what we need in the Women's World Cup against quality back lines when we can't keep the ball and when we gain we will only have a few chances to counter we need we really need cut cut gear there and hopefully she is in the top of her game there because she is what the filipinas need in those instances that we need to have a counter that is quick clinical and with a purpose so cut will katrina gi will, will bring that um Kinley is a lack as well, experience, and um, she, she thrives on that free role in offense. Uh, I think um, she can work as a strike duo along with Serena. She can also play behind Serena as a second striker. That's how creative she is. Or just operate around, try to recycle possession or, you know, pounce on those uh, unfortunate ricochets, that in term, that one. 
um she's always first to that um um i would put in the second tier though uh in the fourth one pala ayan bella bella flaniga no words as well i saw all of her tricks all of her goals all of her skills in person um i think um opinion uh unpopular opinion we can play to be honest i want to see if the filipinas can play a 424 with the forward options that we have so versatile and you midfield natin it can hold what if we can play a 424 um we can utilize all those four four forwards for me hypothetically just for all the chaos and the, on and the offensive schemes that we'll see but i think that's a feasibility that you know, we can do somewhere in the sea games or on friendly perhaps um but bella um if there's something uh, a player that we can show to the to the young ladies on like who is the most probably most fearless adventurous uh flashy player i think bella bella should be there well then on the second tier um we have um chandler mcdaniel um i don't um uh, it's still uh, i don't um i think she's recovering well i just don't th- uh, i i'm just not sure if, whether she's recovering on time to get into full fitness before the world cup women's world cup so but hypothetically if he, uh, to be honest she if she's really 100% full fitness um i would put her on the first tier but because she's not she's on the second tier and yeah uh, a message to chandler hoping for a fast recovery from all the fans of the filipinas then um second tier as well um we have camrod um i would put camrod in the forward because in forward because i think we really don't have a lot of quality options there at uh who is currently healthy um aside from the four that i've mentioned earlier um camrod is very good on the on, as a winger i think um I, uh, in the past few training camps he's been listed as a midfielder and as a defender so i think it's due to the pace eh, and the and the trickery that she has um that's an underrated part of camrod's game but uh i think we should utilize her more on offense that's her that's her um yes. natural position and i sure. think uh ito underrated part of her game she knows how to position her well for herself well for crosses very good running i think if uh if she gets the chance to get more crosses in i think um it will bring some dimension to our attack um then after that um we have um alicia del campo out of the all homegrown forwards i think she has the very, most uh, impressive form but again um it's hard to penetrate the starting rotation if you have consistent talents like sarina qq and mm. uh bella there so and cat as well so i hope she gets a chance in uh in the build up well for the others uh from the uh, for the others um well um alisa i think alisa ube i think uh um i i think she won't make it but he'll play in the sea games probably on yeah. on other uh, on the other tournaments as well plus i think eligible pa siya sa up i think uh, uap season might be the priority for her as well then other than that i don't really think we have an option yet may uh, chasing i don't um, we haven't seen that much of her yet hopefully the team uh, the team management can bring her uh, in next year but um we need all the players we can get in the forward line seriously i think it's the most weakest position that we had in terms yeah. of depth so that's why the uh, it's hard for me to list down a third tier because we don't really have any options we have solid options up front but when one goes down it's hard to think of someone who can replace unless it's a wing player because we know eva or carly can play in the wing on the on the flanks but in the forward options up center i don't think we have we have that much option so hopefully we can recruit more or i guess or 
others who are in still in the mix on the roster can step up. There's so much time pa. Yeah. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, I think a lot of people could very well disagree with literally all of what we said. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's what we want to know, what we want to hear. Uh, who you'd want to... Uh, who you would pick right now if this hypothetical World Cup is to happen um, next week. We have varying opinions and these are just fan discussions that we honestly have offline we're just recording it now and uh you know this might change for sure it will change especially we have a huge um tournament coming up on on february so that's for that's for another episode <laughs> so yeah uh let's jump into the um uh, questions uh do you guys have anything to add before we proceed with the questions in terms of your um hypothetical <laughs> world cup squad Ako goods na ako kasi sabi ko nga sa'yo, sabi ko nga sa'yo parang three days heading into this recording, no? parang sabi ko, shit, paano ko gagawin yun? Kasi ano, y- yung literally we're spoiled for choices and you don't know what exactly is going through the, the minds of Stage. So, yes. you'd have to assume based on form, based on merit and all that kind of stuff. So, Okay na ako doon. Kasi yan ako doon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, questions from, of course, uh, the, let's, let's call, <laughs> let's call him the AF granddaddy. Bolivs Boliman. <laughs> It would be uh, re- remiss <laughs> not to touch on the recent PNG friendly. So, here are my two questions about it. What did the panel like or dislike about Reina Bontas, Alicia Barker, and Meryl Serrano's performances. Who'd want to answer that? Ako unahin ko na yung, ano, yung, oh. ako unahin ko na yung sinabi ko earlier about Reina Bonta na we need that calming figure at the back. Kasi most of the defenders in the modern era are either they're frantically kicking the ball away, especially in the women's side, um, rather than composing themselves looking up front and seeing who's who's available who's open so that's what i've seen with uh, with bonta how calm she was in terms of uh controlling the ball um waiting for the opening for her team so that's one thing that i've liked about uh her performance uh serrano in her uh introduction in the png game part two um no nakita ko on how she played The girls got pace. And uh, that's something that is going to be useful as well for the Filipinas. Knowing that we have players who know how to pass the ball. So if, if for example, Serrano runs, you know, just breaks through the defense, finds a spot in the midfield or finds a spot in the middle of the penalty box, pretty sure there's going to be a chance for her. And then uh, with Barker... With Barker, she's that strong, imposing player na, you know, uh, I'll, I'm gonna get the ball from you. I don't care. And when I get the ball from you, either I'm gonna pass the ball or just gonna run with it. So, you know, those are the kind of performances that we're looking for uh, heading into their Christmas break or their holiday break. Uh, gaya nga nang sabi ko last time, it was kind of a moral boosting uh win for them knowing that they've had a few downs uh, in their previous camps in uh, Chile and other parts of the globe so uh, going away with a victory twice in the Australian camp uh, gives us a lot of positivity heading into the holiday break and uh, that's what I've noticed especially with the performances of the of the three players he mentioned thanks Jay I have nothing to add <laughs> <laughs> Can't ikaw. I have something to add. Well, I just have something to add. Nan, um, I think it's the best. Um, those players that uh, Bolibs mentioned, they're all quality players that you know. Uh, more that adds a different dimension to our play. Um, what uh, what I um in uh Reina with her calmness, then um, I really think uh. Serrano will be a good option if ever. Well, let's let's not 
I'm not preempting it and I don't want it to happen. But if Sarah Egesby gets injured or something, uh, Meryl can provide a solid plan B. But she, kaya uh, sa mga fans ni Sarah Egesby, I'm not, ano, the, you're just, ka, uh, yep, you're just, uh, uh, wag lang tayo uh, magkikita busy. somewhere, Kenta. Oh, oh. <laughs> BCP, business, <laughs> ano, tutusan talaga kita. B, ano, business continuity planning. <laughs> no, uh, uh, and with Alika Barker, um, we have mentioned it for a long time ago that we need someone um, at right back to actually challenge the position. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, forever. Um, I think um, it's something that um, what Alicia brings to the squad to that position is the crossing ability. Um, we uh, it's something um, and we have a very good for for uh target forward in Sarina who has a very good vertical for headers. But the question there is who's gonna supply the crosses to her? I mean, aside from Sofia. I don't uh it's a good thing that we have um Alicia now seeing her crosses ang tatalim ng crosses niya you know that it's uh it's hit very well and it's hit with pace you, it's like when you're Sarina and you see that ball perfect timing you just don't need to really put power on it you just redirect it and most likely it will be a goal that's what we need for our um for our full backs because especially when we like win set pieces win free kicks It's an it's uh, a rare opportunity for us in a women's world cup match to score and I think set pieces will be important so the delivery will be important so aside from ta- from captain Tane and Sofia I think uh, Alicia will be a very good set piece taker for us for those indirect free kicks um I just uh well we we just hope to see that um, get uh, we hope to see them get more you know, get more appearances next year because all of them are like uh, quality and they have some um not really a very good chance but they have a shot to go to the starting lineup if they really produce really well Th- that's the quality that they have to be honest thank you Ken um his second question what is your favorite goal during the PNG friendlies hmm. your favorite goal Yung goal ni Coward. Actually. She blasted it. Like she blasted it to the she blasted it to the top of the the net outside of the penalty box. I mean well san, sanay kasi tayo that our defenders don't really score unless it's headers. <laughs> Naalala ko bigla yung mga header ni uh, ni Haley. Yun. Mm. And the only one who can manage long range attempts is Captain Tanay. Yes. I think no one really attempts it. Uh, but Uh, it really in- reinforces the point that we need um, that Jessica Coward is a very good option at the CDM slot. True. Because um, yes. Um, again, in a, if we're playing in a parang back be- back pedal position in a women's World Cup match, we have three things that we should uh, take advantage of if we're in offense. First of all, counters. Second, um, set pieces. Third, long shots. Because like uh you don't know we've we've seen many times uh goalkeepers committing blunders on long shots. I mean that's a pun- puncher's chance of going in. Malay mo biglang bumaba yung bola, magswerve pumasok. Or malay mo may mishandle ng goalkeeper and it goes in. So we need someone who can really put in those wicked long range attempts. And um yung kay Coward akala ko nung una ile lay off lang niya yun eh oh. then suddenly boom <laughs> oh it's in the back of the net i i, th- I really think uh uh she should be given the green light by coach allen to shoot more from that range whenever it's available to her thanks Ken. so my my favorite is cowards also and tees gusto ko yung tumalikod siya tapos she would lang pas yeah gusto ko yan Dito Jay, do you have a favorite goal from the PNG game? Talagang tinignan ko pa yung highlights. No? <laughs> <laughs> Ang hirap pumili, pero the, the one that, that uh, I, I liked the most was yung, yung kay Kat Gayu. Yung, I think that was her first goal. Pass from, that was Q from the right. Tapos, 
she's crowded by three or four players. So first attempt was blocked, and then she controlled it with her left foot, then turned again. Tapos sabay shot, parang grabe. Te balut na balut ka don pero na banat mo ba yon? <laughs> Kaya ano parang y- yun yung kinagusto ang kong goal don. And it's it's in her characteristic naman, knowing Kat na she's not gonna stop until she gets the ball into the back of the net. So that just sums it up. Or that sums up her 2022 with that goal, nung that first goal, her first goal in that game against uh, PNG, part two. Thank you, Tito J. And Bonibs, a uh, 2022 questions for the panel is, who is your offensive player of the year? Sige. Ano na? Oh, para hindi na ako mahirapan. Q, Q, Q for the pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Q, Q, Q. I, I mean, I mean, is there anything else left to say uh, after her performance or after notching those those goals for 2022? Uh, she really is a beast up front. So if you're talking about an offensive player of the year, she's your gal. Q, Q, Q for the pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's uh, Katrina Giro for reasons I've already mentioned. But I don't know. She she just reads it. She's just different. Parang ibang iba yung um football IQ ni ni um Kat compared to others. I guess um as Kent explained, I, I, it's because she's playing a uh, very high level in 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 Sweden. But she's also v- always hungry for the ball. She's such a hard worker, and I noticed that when when we when we um recorded for her episode, she talked about how um she admires Ronaldo, but unlike Ronaldo, <laughs> she hindi ano siya hindi siya tamad alam mo yun? I'm not saying tamad siya. What I'm saying is, hinahabol niya talaga yung bola. So I'm Shots saying. fired. Shots <laughs> fired. Oh my God, it's sick. Get it, ikaw. Pwede award lang natin sa buong team? Joke lang. <laughs> I mean, everyone, for me, it's 2022 was a coming out year for everyone in that time. I mean, almost many players had their moments talaga. So, I would li- take that channel. Well done to the whole team. Sobra. Um, but ba- bawal for... dito ang ganyang sagot. Kailangan. <laughs> <laughs> ano ka? Hindi ka nagigil sa The Buzz, uy. Sa uh, football bro ka nagigil. <laughs> <laughs> Nanay ka um, dapat dyan of... sa ESBF, boy. <laughs> <laughs> just joking, just joking. Uh, um, first of all, it's good, uh, defensive player of the year, um, Jess, Ofe- Jess Coward for me. Ah, um, yeah. And daya din ilusitan yung offensive, sige, defensive Jessica Coward. Okay. Uh, uh, showing offensive. the defender some love. Uh, first of all, why, uh, I see, uh, offensive, Sarina. Hmm. Sorry, no um, problem. first of all, why Jess Coward as defensive player of the year? Because I, I really think, um, as per what Tito J mentioned, in modern football, she has the characteristics of being a modern defender. Can can defend very well, uh, imposing, basically imposing, uh, very experienced, uh, poised, but at the same time, she can also join the offense and make things happen. You know, the versatility that she brought in her back line. You know, there's a reason why she quickly uh, got her spot in the starting lineup. I think that's it. Uh, that should speak for itself. And that's why I chose her as uh, my uh, defensive player of the year. For offensive player of the year, Sarina, more, more than the key moments, um, she put she put home that penalty that made us qualify for the Women's World Cup and that remarkable header in the AFF Women's Championship final where four Thai defenders were not enough for her to win that header. I mean, you should we should hang that in the National Museum of Fine Arts. That moment where she beat four Thai players for a header, dapat nasa museum yun. Should be an iconic sports photo. Kasi naman yung kumuha nun, As a football fan, I will thank you forever. So I mean, more than the uh, for me, kasi it's why Sarina. It's because someone needs. Uh, there's no. I think there's no more. 
there's no one good in finishing in the team as Sarina. I mean, kung poacher lang ah, pagiging poacher for me. Um uh, I think uh Sarina very good uh very good positioning and yung level of aggressiveness aggressiveness that she brings. She's just like um minsan di mo lang namamalayan nagpe-press na bigla. Akala mo nakatayo. Nakakapansin naka- ko siya kay Sarina at times. Sometimes she's just standing there the, uh, then the ne- very next second when the opposition backline looks indecisive on what to do, she will just charge forward and try to bring pressure. And I think she doesn't really waste any movement. I like like Katrina for me. But I think it's all about producing goals. I mean, most of uh, Sarina Bolden's goals are doesn't really take any much effort from her. Just at the right place at the right time. Just shooting shooting the, uh, the ball. Very good attempts. Or should I say, at most times, she's been, uh, the term is clinical. Clinical. So, Heading into next year's Women's World Cup, we need more clinical people like that because we we won't really get any m- much more chances against top sides. So that's why Sarina Bolden is uh, my offensive player of the year, and that's why the reason she has a chant in UF as well. <laughs> If she's not that good, go <laughs> <laughs> Jay, defensive player of the year. Defensive player of the year. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Actually, mas mahirap yung pangatlo niya. <laughs> ano ba yung pangatlo niya? Para para isang bagsakan ko na lang. Ang pat- pangatlo niya yung tanong, who is your player of the year? Jai, paghirapan mo na ko, Jai. Ay, ay, ay. And then, for, for, for defensive player of the year, <clears throat> like what Kent mentioned, it has to be Jessica Coward. Um, Sinabi ko na rin to kanina na, na pinoint out din ni Kent na in a modern day football, Jessica Coward's uh, uh, ano, uh, an imposing type of player wherein you just see a glimpse of the past of how defenders do their job. So it, it has to be her knowing how, how, how huge or imposing figure she is at the back. Uh, plus, yun nga, uh, one of the scoring threats as well for the Philippines. Player of the Year, talaga, Bolibs. <laughs> talaga. Ginawa ko pa yung trabaho na yun para sa ESBF year-ender. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yun eh, kasi ano, binubuo na rin namin yung year-ender namin. Nag- nag-send na nga si, si Kent sa akin. Uh, player of the Year. Gosh. Player of the Year, for me, per- personal choice would be Tiannis. Why? Because... Not not just because of her goals, uh, of her uh, contributions in, inside the field, but on how strong of a leader she is. You know, y- yung tipong team captain na kailangan mo, aside from, from Hailey Long and the other team captains uh, alongside uh, T. Whenever you see T. is inside the field, you know there's going to be a fight within them na we have to push each other to be better than what we were yesterday. And you you can actually feel it. Uh, nung, nung women's championship, can I, I'm sure you felt it too. When we scored the goal against Thailand, we were not yet happy. We're, we're, not, cel- we're not in celebratory mode yet because we saw how T wanted to get the next goal. And when we got the next goal, then we got the third goal. That's it. That's the kind of leader that you want to see. And uh, personal choice as a as a player of the year, it's going to be Tiannis for me. All right. Thank you. Um, ako isang bagsak na lang. Defensive player and player of the year. To me, it's Haley Long. Um, I think I've mentioned this in, in one of my posts in AF. Um, on top of how well Haley did this year, um, her her leadership in the back line, um, yung passion niya, and also to me, she's that hybrid player. Uh, how do I explain this? Hybrid player in a sense that she kind of represents the past and the future of the Filipinas. 
So um yeah and uh she's 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 there when she's needed the most. She steps up. Para messy. Talaga meron ako comparison sa World Cup, no. Um but I mean like you know how when 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 Messi plays, pag parang when push comes to shove, um you know that susulpot at susulpot siya. Uh, and and I think that's the kind of uh, player Haley is. Um, especially, I think my 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 favorite match um, that uh, Haley played it is the Chile match when they were down to ten uh, ten players. Iba, uh, I don't know. I just I just saw the burning passion in in Haley Long, um, and that to me is why she's my player of the year. And next question. Ah, okay. Um, for Tito J, I would like him to tell us three fun facts about himself. Oh, very showbiz. Ba? Kini yan. <laughs> si Bolibs pa rin. Ang daming talang uh, tarong to. Three fun facts about me. Ano ba? I'm not... I'm not a uh, mass communications journalism or anything related to to what I'm doing now. Kind of guy graduate. Heck, I'm not even a I'm 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 not even a graduate, you know. Or I didn't even graduate college. So that's one. Two, I started uh I started football commentary or football journalism back in what, 2017, 18. So ah Last, ito, final fun fact para sa akin. And it went full circle for me this 2022. Um, I got my my uh, my commentary break in futsal. Uh, particularly in the Tahanan Futsal League with with uh, Direct Glenn Lopez. Uh, if you know him, give him a follow. Pakatin din yung director na yan. Uh, so, that's where I got my start. And then, uh nagtuloy-tuloy siya puro futsal actually yung start ko I, I haven't touched into uh football uh, not until 2019 so when i started it was uh barangay and futsal league and then afterwards it became the WCSA where Miriam plays where i saw Joyce Macho banging in five or six goals a game <laughs> in, in a futsal uh, in a futsal tournament and then the MNCAA, then the Alliance National Futsal uh, Invitational. And yeah, uh, come 2022, it went full circle when uh, the Pinay 5 Futsal team invited me to be their commentator for their two-day um, uh, friendly match against Guam. So yeah, uh, that's fun fact plus a glimpse in the adventure of Tito J. <laughs> Tito J, wala akong pambayad sa'yo ha. Uh, hindi ako nanin hindi ako naninin yun <laughs> actually uh, ito rin yung yung sinasabi mo sa akin sinasabi ko rin sa mga guests namin sa ESBF or actually ano parang alam na nila yon parang hindi na nila sinasabi sa akin um, sino ba yung last na na guest namin ah si coach Coco he knows that he was just there to 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 be interviewed to be part of the news of ESBF. Kasi, uh, interestingly enough, yung mga tao na na-invite natin dito sa football circle, they know that there's there's not much of a revenue in football for now. They know. So, they don't demand. They just want you to align their schedules with them. So, yan. All right. Thanks, Tito J. So, finally, Bolives, if you're listening, thank you. Finally, you have a fun question for me. <laughs> Best brew uh, she's ever had while watching uh, PWNT game this year. Um, ang hirap ng tanong mo, honestly. Kasi, I'm, like, like I said, I'm, I'm into coffee. So, anything roasted from Melbourne. Seven Seeds, small batch roasting co. But if I run out, um, to those who are based in Manila, a golden ticket from Yardstick Coffee is my go-to. So, it's a combination of, ang specific naman ang tanong na to, may roast origin, ganyan. So, it's a combo of, I think, Brazil and Colombia. So, I like to make my own cold brew using golden ticket from Yardstick Coffee. So, cold brew with oat milk is my go-to drink when watching a PWNT game. Um, Thank you for that question. 
uh, Gracious Ray Cruz. Hmm. What do you think is the ideal cut of time for Filipinas management staff to entertain reinforcements to the team? One month before announcement of provisional pool, which could be last week of May 2023. Do you want to answer this, Jay? I think for now, Ken summed it up real good that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So that's the reason why we have these camps. Eh? Uh, other than finding new talents or hidden gems for the Philippine women's national football team, it's about getting them gelled into one unit. Because if, I mean, yes, the reinforcements are welcome a month before the release of your provisional squad. But at the end of the day, you want to see those players that you've utilized during the camps. Because that's, again, that's the purpose of you doing the camp for, for the team to become a, a single unit for them to gel amongst each other. So, yeah, and you see, I've been again, Kanina. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Do you have anything to add, Ken, about that question or an answer to that question? Well, we're at the point where we don't really need to tinker a lot um, because we need what we need. Um, in the uh, in the next few training camps before the women's world cup is the solidity of the of the uh, of the players who will be participating uh it's the time where it's not more of the about the selection it's more about the tactics it's more about anticipating or simulating what will happen if the philippines play against new zealand norway and switzerland so i think um 2022, we the coaching staff had more than enough time to see whoever uh, the players who are in the radar. I think uh, I have I have never remembered a year for the nas women's national team that we had played a lot of prospects or we gave caps to those new players. Um, Madalas they just trickle in over the few years, but this year. We really uh, opened up to new prospects, to new every talents. Camp. Every camp. Yes, every yeah. camp. Oh, yeah. That, that shows the depth of our newfound talent pool. And that's always a good thing. However, uh, it's not, ane, um, the Women's World Cup is fast approaching. And I think we really, uh, the coaching staff really had a good look. So probably there, yung pinag usapan natin kanina, the thing that we talked about earlier about who will go if the Women's World Cup starts tomorrow. Most probably, it's in their heads already. They already have an idea of who to bring and who not to bring. And then, um, I, the sign that I can see, if there will be a sign, is if there will, uh, the last two training camps before the tournament, possibly the Pinatar Cup, and if there is another training camp, if there are players who are already left there, unless they're injured, they're probably not gonna make it for me. For me, uh, that's how I look about it. There will be exceptions, yeah. like if uh, what I've said, Chandler, McDaniel, or Angie Beard, because the level of those players are really indispensable. But mm -hmm. for me, to be honest, knowing Coach Touch, no one will be safe. I yeah, mean, and and knowing how pragmatic he is, he will probably focus on those who have made already a mark and then just yes. push them further, just solidify their abilities to play the best that they can come mm -hmm. AUNZ. Just, just, to, just to add to that, I, I, I feel like the, the upcoming Pinatar Cup would be kind of like the culmination. Parang if, there, if there are any reinforcements, they have to make it to the Pinatar Cup. Otherwise, I don't think there would be another chance. Because what's next after that? Sea Games? So... Games. I don't know. Yeah, yeah so and, and I think yung Pinatar Cup would be our toughest challenge yet. These are high ranking teams. So if you don't if if you are a prospect reinforcement and if you don't make it to the Pinatar Cup, parang, uh, I don't think in terms of like being a team fit, parang mm, medyo, um, it's it's measure iffy for me. So um yo, uh, I don't want to say it's a cutoff, but if there would be any reinforcements, the pin, the upcoming Pinatar uh, Cup would be the best time to integrate them. Um, 
the second question is, what is your take on the Long Alcantara Center Back Partnership? And how about Cowart moving bit up as a defensive holding midfield? Um, ako na una, I am an advocate of this partnership. <laughs> I would love to see it. Um, especially if Cowart truly moves up the pitch. Um, yun, yun lang. <laughs> I, I, I'm excited to see this. So I'm really hoping... Um, Maya is available for the Pinatar Cup because I, I would love to see that partnership. What about you guys? Ako na mauna kay Kent kasi matalino si Kent eh. Mas marami siyang masasabi sa akin. Um, I admire that partnership as well um, and and I hope to see it. Plus, pushing Coward further up as a defensive holding mid, for me, it, it will just, you know, it, it will just Uh, ano bang masasabi ko doon? Parang i-confirm niya lang yung sinasabi namin kanina pa na she's a, she's a, an old age or or no, not old age, pangit sabihin. Uh, she's uh she's a classic defender in a modern day football setup. So, you know, pushing her a bit up as as a defensive mid could do wonders for us knowing how Um, kung merong sweeper keeper na tinatawag, she's a sweeper center back uh, for for the Filipina. So, you know, that's something that I would love to see as well uh, in the Pinatar Cup. Um, yes, ako naman, uh, <laughs> um, ako sa sabi ko lang, uh, I advo- uh, that's one good partnership as well, Haley Long and uh, Maya Alcantara. And pushing Jessica Coward off as a CDF, actually, it opens up the possibility that we can have a three-player midfield. CDM, CDM si Jess Coward, and then you can play at the same time, ito, the one of the best scenarios, you play in a, in a three-player midfield, ang, uh, you have CD, CDM si Jess Coward, and then the two midfielders are Sarah Egesbeek and Meryl Serrano. I mean, that's gotta be fun. If you ask me, if you, if I think we'll, uh, if Sarah Egesbeek, um, In those in matches, if uh if mag if the long Alcantara partnership at center back develops and we know how versatile um Jess Coward is, may and she's reliable on defense as well. Maybe, just maybe, we can deploy two offensive minded midfielders in front of her in the midfield setup so that it will help us to create more chances. So I'm thinking I'm really thinking about uh, the possibility that we have a good CDM option so that we can afford to play um Serrano and Egesvik to help with the offense without compromising on defense. So that question I think it made sense now we can with vers- with cowards uh and with Coward's uh, versatility and if my Alcantara continues to integrate and improve more, maybe we can produce a more attacking setup come the Women's World Cup. Ang taba na utak ni Ken? Ah, sabi ko nga sa'yo eh. <laughs> okay. Uh, if we can, from Sarah Arjasa, if we can add one or two more reinforcements, which position should they fill in and who could that be? Um, mauna na ako. So, Sarah, actually, like, for me, may only, the only person in my wish list right now is Angie Beard. Um, yun lang. The rest, you know, people talk about Mas Pacheco, uh, Maya Doms, and all these other um, players. I don't think they have the burning passion in the, 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 the words of Coach Allen. They, you have to have the burning passion to represent the country. And I don't think they have that. So, To me, why why waste your time um you know trying to convince them or or whatnot? So at this point, it's just Angie Beard for me. And once we have Angie Beard, I think okay na ako. Parang pa- manonood ako ng game versus Norway versus uh New Zealand and Switzerland. I, I'm you know, I'd, I'd be comfortable watching it and I know that it will be a very decent scoreline. Kung matala man tayo, it'll be des- decent scoreline. It won't be as bad like a 4-0 so um <laughs> check, baka baka may bumalik sa akin anong sinasabi mo World Cup level 
<laughs> yeah, mo na silang bumalik. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, no, I, that's how I know. That's how um confident I am with with our backline. Once we have um Angie Beard, it's anyway. Ang ganda ng timing niya. Eh. Like this camp, we had uh we finally have a dynamic right back. And then when when we have her, para alam mo yon sorted na talaga yung backline. Natayu mo na talaga yung intramuros. So yon yeah, that's that's uh, it's just Angie Beard for me. She's the only person on my um wish list right now. Because like what Kat said, yung lineup natin parang ano na siya? Eh? Hindi na siya masada nagbabago. Parang almost I feel like yung squad natin for the World Cup is almost like I don't know maybe seventy eighty percent. Parang yun nga alam na nila kung sino yung pupunta sa World Cup and 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 to me I know who those we know who those players are are and we know how good they are and I know we know why they will make it to that um World Cup squad so I'm I'm confident with our backline and I know if we work on our uh offense yakang yakan na yon Sarah guys back to you sa akin ano Uh, same thing. Uh, there's really not much of reinforcement that we need as of the moment. Because uh, if if there's any reinforcement, we could have confirmed that on the second camp, no, uh, on the second camp of of the Philippines after the uh, the women's uh, AFF Women's Championship. So for me, uh, other than you know, Angela Beard. Uh, okay na okay na yun huwag na nating pahirapan yung sarili natin di ba k- k- kasi um, yung sinasabi nila na uh, Maz Pacheco di ba sabi parang there are a lot of people wanting to see her but you have to ask yourselves does she want you to see her wearing the the national team colors di ba if she doesn't then why bother kasi if you're gonna do that it's just gonna be uh, or magiging kagaya lang yan ng male counterparts nila eh. sorry if if I have to bring that into the conversation but it's it's gonna be like that you're gonna see players who just want to represent the country not because they love to represent the country but there's something there's something that will benefit them if they do so So if if they don't have the burning passion or desire to play for the for the three stars and a sun, then why bother? Ba? Yes, and just just to add, no, Angie Beard, Angie Beard was invited to the Aussie camp during the international break. She declined only to join the team in in California. So I think that that says a lot. You declined. An invitation for an Australia Cup only to join the Philippines. Come on, so ayan mas na excited tuli ako. Ikaw na kaya. Well, uh, in la um we don't really have a lot of uh you know options now for like to integrate to the team. As per what I've said earlier, we're getting to a point that they're just finalizing everything, and you need someone exceptional and really um committed to. To be able to get a chance to have a late consideration, I think si ah uh, magasabiyahe si Angie Bird dala ang inihintay siguro. Oh oh, because yung ay yung quality kasi na sabi. Kaya nala ang inihintay. Ah, uh, and kaya na na sabi mo na sabi mo ani na um declining a an invite ah uh, to a country ah uh, where you already had a couple of cups, if I'm not mistaken, then to just be committed to our team it already says a lot that Angie really wants to play for us and parang ano na siya eh, given ano na siya parang certain na siya for some Aussie women's football observers I think they're already anticipating it uh, hindi na lang talaga nakapinalize kasi di pa siguro alam yung status ng Philippine passport ni Angie pero siya na lang talaga yung inintay. Isa na lang paalis na mga ganung tipo ng ano. Nalarga ng... na. <laughs> Nalarga na. Ano, isa na lang. Nalarga na. Isa na lang. And for me, yung mga commitments, if ever, kung may maglalaro sa Pilipinas, I think after the Women's World Cup pa siya i-revisit. Because I, I, I really don't think that there's not a lot of 
uh, Filipino heritage players out there that doesn't want to represent us. They just need that push. And if it it's the Women's World Cup performance that will help them convince themselves to play for the motherland, um, then you know it. I think it will only happen after the Women's World Cup. But for now, just for the sake of continuity and developing more uh, solidity, tama lang na we should not really cater any more commitments unless the coaching staff deems the player to be very exceptional. All right, thank you. And a question from Gerald M. What's your take on Miklat not being invited on the last two camps? Are the Filipinas a better team without her on the roster? Um, pwede na ako mauna. Sagutin ko na to. So, um, I don't think I don't think we're in, in, in the position to say that the team is better with or without her. Um, we don't know why. Ito, ito yung, just, just to just to uh, um, highlight what I mentioned um uh earlier about transparency so we don't know why um certain players are not invited in camp um yun nga parang every camp it's a guessing game who's going to make it to who's going to make it in the roster no so we don't know if um Miklat is injured or um if there's an issue with her skills or whatnot so there are rumors going around we don't know what the what the truth is on the Jessica McClatt knows or or the staff knows. Um, but my take on if the team is a better is better with or without her, um, I can't answer that. Uh, but I believe in team fit. Uh, you could be the best player uh there is, but if you're not team fit, uh, hindi din ano, hindi din maganda yon for the team. Do you have anything hmm. to add, Kent or Jay? Hmm. The question here kasi is um when you question the absence of someone in a team, ang lagi mong uh, the first question that you'll need to ask is is the team functioning properly without in her absence? That's the the are because if you consider someone who's missing, if you want to really um you know, make a case for her to be part of the roster. The thing is, you should be able to prove that without her, the team is not functioning very well or in, a, in an optimal manner. In those last friendlies, um, I think the team is fun- is playing well. And ano, uh, barring some maybe um, chemistry issues or some individual hiccups, but the team is running like it should be. Because for me, if you're being left out and you want a case to, um, if you want a case to go back, you have to, you have, you should have proven that when, you, when you're not there, you are, uh, no, the team is not performing well. Therefore, you're indispensable. But what happens is, um, I think, uh, in Miklat's um position, you have QQ. QQ is, uh, currently doing what Miklat does. Um, even before in the Women's Asian Cup, Miklat is um, being utilized more as a as a substitute for QQ or for Sarina, and then Meryl comes in, and Meryl is very good, very going forward. Maybe Coach Allen can use her as an alternate option to QQ. Then Carly Freeless is also, I think, nung, um, correct me if I'm wrong, pero nung Papua New Guinea friendly nasa front to si Carly. So you you know um there are many uh last few camps siguro if it's only one camp then um it the team is not performing well up or up to coach Allen's expectations we will see a pl- that player go back but if he's not she's not being called for multi camp multiple camps already and the coach is already um making the team work like she's she's not uh na parang meron ng gagawa nung trabaho niya in Filipino i think that says a lot and siguro the best way to ano dun, ang magiging best way for it is to have coach Allen really speak about it because you know it's it's really hard to speculate but for me that's that's my take on it um you should prove that you're indispe- indispensable i really 
think that he I think she really needs to prove more sana pero I, if the team is is like not really hurting in her absence that that is a sign pero sana in the end, uh, before the tournament if ever whatever the decision on Miklat is I think coach Allen should clarify because it's what the fans deserve transparency if if I have a request now since every cap naman we release a may press release right so like other yep. FAs when they I know um uh post a press release for their camp they would list all the players and at the same time if one you know usually a player na involved lagi sa camp pag wala or not called up there's a reason why so i don't know and then um for example vlatko the last uh, i think the last um us camp He was asked exactly why certain players were out, and he was able to answer specifically per player. So I think um, if if the management wants um, the fans or supporters to stop speculating um, or you know making up stories, because there's there's so many stories out there about why Miklat is not invited in the last two camps, um, they can you know just simply put an end to it by releasing a, a statement as to why she wasn't invited. If it's I don't know. That's their prerogative at the end of the day. I'm just saying that in other women's teams, that's that's how they do it. Because I hate, I really hate for um fans to assume certain things that aren't uh true. Uh I know. Dito Jay, do you have anything to add? Actually, I I can't even comment about this because at the end of the day, the one's gonna clear this up. Is uh, Coach Taj or the PWNT management, diba? Uh, and in yeah, talking about transparency, you don't want people to speculate. Or actually, if you're the one speculating about it, you don't want to speculate only to be ridiculed about your speculation, diba? Because people can make 105 or 110 stories as to why Miklat is not in the squad, but there's only one main reason behind it. And there's only a couple of people who knows the reason why she's not in. Diba? So I can say that Miklet is not there because Coach Taj doesn't like her. For example, diba? I've seen this many, many times in various fa- uh, football groups. Like what? This reason. Diba? Ang dami. Parang an, every, every time that there is a camp, every time that there is a camp, Uh, for the Filipinas, there's always this one comment na bakit wala si Miklat and there's gonna be another comment or a reply to it saying na uh, because Coach Taj doesn't like him, uh, doesn't like her, yada, yada, yada. I've, I for one don't want to believe in it because she's been an integral part of the squad. Diba? Why all of a sudden that's the case? That's one of the questions that need to be answered if it really is the case. But if not, then that's another conversation for another day. Diba? Uh, at, again, people don't want to be speculating too much about stuff, only to be ridiculed about your speculation. So, I, I guess if if we're a bit more transparent on what's happening, then we wouldn't have this kind of speculations. That you know, ang ang masakit pa nun is these speculations actually makes or breaks the team, diba? What if your speculation is correct? Eh, di na hulaan natin na may problema, di ba? Na, na behind all of the progress and all of the achievements that the Filipinas had over the last year and a half or so, meron palang ganito na tinatago lang natin, di ba? At least, right from the get-go, if there's stuff going on like this, makaisa na natin right then and there para hindi na siya lumaki ng lumaki ng lumaki <laughs> na agaya ng Ayoko na magbanggit. Basta na hindi na siya lumaki. Yan, ganun lang yan. Okay. Kung ano man yun. Tama. <laughs> tama. tama. Detagdag ko lang din sa point ni Tito J. Yun nga. Yes. Ano, if, if tinapos na sana sa ganong statement, parang, I mean, it would give yeah. peace of mind. Not yes. only to the, ano, to the, to the player. Not, not only to the, ano, to everyone. I mean, kailangan, yun lang sa tiguro yung ano eh, ito yung disadvantage na we don't have transparency talaga. Full transparency on what's happening. Kasi you don't want to breed discontent. You don't want people to speculate. Kasi nakaligalig siya. 
to be exactly. honest. Exactly. Yes. If the yes. rumors, if the rumors get, ano, if the rumors get in, uh, ano, irritating, it will affect the whole team. Baka mis- mismo iba pati baka players tan- they will ask the players ganito if so, for some insider stuff. We don't want that to happen because it will only like do nagsisimula yung parang suspicions or it will affect team chemistry. So hopefully the management or the coaching staff will put light onto it as soon as possible talaga. We don't want to keep the fans in the dark that tipong they speculate if you keep and in- If you keep them in the dark, they will speculate what a circle looks like, what a square looks looks like. Ganun. Kasi di mo mga makita eh. Ganun siya. Oh, Thank tsaka you. diba? Parang yes. ano lang yan eh. Sorry, uh, one last oh. point. Parang parang sa showbiz lang yan eh. For example, maglabas ng headliner itong certain publication na Katniel nakita nag-aaway somewhere. ba? Diba? Pwedeng, pwedeng sabihin na andi, nagbibiruan lang sila, nagjo-joke lang sila. Pero... Their fans, the Katniel fans, will speculate, lo, baka mamaya wala na Katniel bukas, baka mamaya wala na... All that kind of shit. Diba? Parang, mangyayari na lang yan is, mabubuo na lang ng mabubuo yung speculation sa isip ng tao to the point na either, sige, gatungan na lang natin yung speculation nila or no, let's clear the air for once at linawi natin kung ano talaga yung nangyayari. Hindi po kami nag-aaway, nag-aasaran lang po kami ni Daniel nung oras na yun. Tapos, walang issue, di ba? Di ba ganun, ganun? Parang, if you put in a football context, for example, oh, uh, sabi ni Coach, ano, Stange, uh, or, or sabi ng tao, di raw gusto ni Coach Stange si, si Miklat. Ano ba talaga? What's the real score between the two of them? And then, just Stange can just come up with a, with a statement saying na, something something that goes make that this has, has been an integral part of the team but we always look into the development of the squad yada 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 and we think in the long run diba? yung mga ganon, parang something to appease the fans something just to end the freaking speculations about it ito lang ang sagot dyan let boy abunda interview ano <laughs> ganon <dyan. laughs> tama no? Yun na talaga sagot 